I was just talking to Mike Perrine, you know, my friend who's always on. Oh my God. I, can I just tell you, I love him. I love you. And I love your videos. And I know everyone says that, but they're so good. I learn something new every time. Uh, Great. Uh, fabulous. They're fabulous. Okay, well, that makes me feel happy because I was, I was just talking to him before and, you know, I, like I was saying before we started this recording, I'm in this little bit of crisis of spirit because, you know, the wellness world and the coaching world has got me down a little bit. It's not, um, you know, there's a lot of preaching of, about being authentic and, and I'm not feeling it, quite frankly. <laughs> I'm not feeling the authenticity and mm -hmm. he was like trying to, you know, pep me up for my interviews that I have this this morning and um I said I don't know if this is a good idea that I even get on camera <laughs> and I'm feeling this way because some real shit is going to come out well I think that's the point I mean that's the point of this time you know what I mean um I think like you know why you're saying that and why I'm feeling that and everyone else is feeling that is because you know our bullshit radars have <laughs> significantly raised let me like, introduce you though Really cool. Oh, that, that would be nice. Yeah. Hey, guys. <laughs> you're, you're Heather Waxman, um, heatherwaxman.com. You're the co-author of Body Peace. You are a woman who is doing her thing and inspiring other young women. And I thank God for you because I didn't have anyone like you when I was your age and when I was coming up and trying to find myself. So I, I am very grateful for you and what you are offering to women your age and younger girls like my daughter. Um, but now I'm going to let you just talk about your bullshit meter <laughs> and, bo you. and body piece a little bit if you want to get that in really quick. Yeah, right on. Well, first of all, thank you. I received that and I send it all back to you. You know, I love you. I love you because we can have real conversations like this. Yeah. Um, yeah. So our bullshit radars are, are really, <laughs> they're high, man. I mean, we can sniff it. We can sniff it. And I think, you know, um, I haven't been in the entrepreneurial world as long as you have, which is why I consider you one of my mentors in that arena. However, I've been in there long enough to also understand that. But what's, what I've learned in my experience um, is two things. A, whatever bothers you so intensely is something that you need to take a look at inside yourself, which is obviously a hard pill for people to swallow. But if you really are invested in personal growth, spiritual development, whatever you want to call it, then that's the first thing that you're going to do. Okay, so what? why is this triggering me so deeply? What emotional trigger is being brought up for me? And we're feeling that more intensely. Like we've always felt emotional triggers, but we're feeling them more intensely because um, without getting too heady, there's just the energies in this of this planet is just consistently rising and rising and rising, and we're getting more sensitive. Um, and it's all good, like it's beautiful. But if we don't know how to use that properly and how to kind of turn the camera lens back on us, that's sort of when we can easily uh, project all that onto other people. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, so. And I just, I'm sorry to interrupt it. Yeah, I, it, no, no, go. What it's bringing up for me is that there's this, mm -hmm. there's this rise of energy. There's this rise of enthusiasm just for the stuff that we're talking about. Which I'm really mm -hmm. excited about, you know, spirituality and looking inside and meditation and yoga and all, and all that good stuff. And, and going back to the earth with the way that we eat. Um, unfortunately, with the rise in popularity comes that rise of opportunity and opportunistic <laughs> you know, natures that come flaring up. And it's great that everyone wants to jump on the bandwagon. Um, but we have to beware as consumers of that. And, and I had a really interesting conversation on Facebook the other day. Um, one of my girlfriends posted something about the McDonald's ads and the Coke ads during the Super Bowl and how they're kind of capitaliz capitalizing on like, you know, the good stuff. But then I'm just like, whatever the message gets out the message gets out who cares i mean it's mcdonald's we know what mcdonald's is and and i'm and i'm torn because i've been i i love the stuff that i've done i love the work that i've done but it's been base level it's been get the hook you know put out the the hook see what i can reel in with a, with a couple minute video and i want to start bringing people to the next level with this stuff or okay, so yeah. I hooked you and I have like 700 videos out there, but now it's like, let's talk about the real stuff that the reason why you clicked on that video, what triggered, you know, something in you 
to go watch that video. And now how can we go deeper and really explore what's happening inside with your nutrition, with the way you move, with the way you, you think, the way you feel mm -hmm. about yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right on. As you, you know, <laughs> as no, but you're so right. I mean, the, right now the two we're in this, we're in a full moon. It starts today. The energy is incredibly intense. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling it right in my stomach, my diet front area. It's just like going cray cray. And that's because like, Okay, so for all y'all who are not familiar with the chakra system, I'm sure that most of your readers are actually familiar or in your followers that there is one. Long story short, we have a bunch of um, energetic circles in and above our body, and they all govern different areas of our life. We could do like a five-hour video on that alone. Now, 50-hour video on that. <laughs> I know it would be, be insane. <laughs> But basically what's happening right now is right in our, in, our, in our stomach, that's called our solar plexus chakra. And that governs many things, but as it pertains to our conversation, that really governs the area of personal power, boundaries, will, rebirth of, of you and who you are, and all of that is being triggered emotionally right now. Mm -hmm. um, and with that comes that higher bullshit radar that we were talking about. It really heightens. So there's two there's two parts to what you're talking about, which is part A is what one of my mentors said to me, I went to a workshop with her uh, last last year, and she said to me, I see your purity, I see your innocence. You need to A, get tougher, like learn how to, because I'm really you know me, I'm very pure and very innocent, sweet. But she said, like, you need you need to develop a tougher skin. Um, and you also need to beware of the sea of spiritual egos because there are many around you. And she wasn't trying to be like, beware. She was telling me from a place of start cleansing your solar plexus chakra, really getting to work on that so you can really own your personal power so that you can be an example for yourself and everyone around you of purity, innocence, and strength. And what you'll be able to do is better sniff out, you know, those spiritual egos that are around. Now, they exist. They will exist. They always have existed. What I believe is that, A, we need to take a look at what's triggering us and how that's reflecting what we need to clean up and heal. And B, we need to just shine our light brighter, continue to be real, continue to be the women that we are, and encourage people to join us. Because now what it's about this time period is about communal effort, right? Like this conversation, I'm not sitting here being like, ah, I'm going to talk about my book today. Like, no, I, which is which is great, everyone. There you go. Shameless plug. Um, but really, it's, it's really an opportunity for us to connect and to talk about a subject together. Going into an interview thinking that it's going to be all about you doesn't work anymore because of that higher bullshit radar that we have. Yeah. So it's really all of those things that come together. And you're right. There are people who are who have large platforms that are are not sharing the message in a way that is truthful. But that is only a message for us to continue to shine brighter, to speak louder, and to invite people to join with us. When you start talking about chakras... I know that half of my audience is probably going to be like, what? And click off. But this is, this is important. Not, you don't have to believe in it for it to no. work in your life. If something doesn't feel good in your gut, and this is basically what you're saying, if something doesn't feel good in your gut, explore it. And that's anything, a commercial a food choice, a relationship, a job opportunity. Explore. Stop being mindless with the way that you're living your life. And stop not not trusting. It's not about like trust or distrust. It's that it's this it's we're not being mindful of the decisions that we're making and we're just going blindly into things that look and sound good. Because that's, that's right. the popular opinion. That woman is pretty and she's thin and she's saying things that sound really nice. So it must be good. Even though in your gut, you're like, Oh, I don't know. That sounds like a little bit of bullshit. And that's, right. and that's the message that I'm trying to, to uh, get out there and about going next level. So something triggers you and you want to go say like, so like lose weight with a detox cleanse, whatever. So it triggers you. Cause I title my videos like that because I want to draw people in. I want to draw in the masses mm -hmm. because I want to give them the real stuff. 
now let's talk about what that really means, why you're triggered, what's going on in your life. And I want to talk about your book a little bit because I think, <laughs> and it, like not a shameless plug, a, a, a celebration of something that's very, very cool. Um, going deeper, having that, that body piece, P-E-A-C-E, -E, probably by breaking up and exploring the pieces, the P-I-E-C-E-S's. Oh, I love that. Yeah. It just came to me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, angels. Thank you, angels. But for real, it's not just yeah. making it about the one thing, looking at all the decisions that we're making in our lives and how that is disrupting or contributing to the peace that we have with the relationship with our bodies. That's right. And ourselves. Mm -hmm. So please talk about your book. Shamelessly. Okay. <laughs> okay. No shame, baby. Well, okay. So for anyone out there who doesn't know, um, I struggled with an eating disorder for um, eight years. And it started out as um, really compulsive calorie counting and over exercising, which really morphed into anorexia nervosa. Um, I was 20 pounds less than I am now. My hair was falling out. I lost my period. Uh, I was severely depressed. Um, I tried to commit suicide once when I had, uh, when I was being given antidepressants. Um, so I was really in the thick of, of, of that deep, deep, dark eating disorder, which then morphed into, um, overeating and compulsive overeating, which is really common for people who, um, start out, you know, restricting and, um, and move into that area. Over the course of that eight years, I had I had gone through recovery programs, outpatient recovery programs. I wasn't able to go to inpatient because I I, I didn't have a low enough BMI to be admitted. Um, and so I was going to these outpatient recovery programs, but they weren't working for me because um, they still focused on the one thing that I had been consumed with just in a different way. And what I mean by that is that I was obsessed with calorie counting. I was obsessed with over exercising and, 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 and I had that obsession. But when I went to the outpatient recovery program, you know, I had a meal plan that I had to follow to hit a certain number of calories. I could only exercise a certain amount of times per week. So, and I'm not, you know, if anybody out there has been through a recovery program and it worked for them, that's wonderful. And I'm not at all knocking that just in my experience, it was really a reiteration of the same thing in a different way. I think so, a lot of people have the experience where the treatment is just a, the flip side of the symptom or the issue. And I think that that's going to mm -hmm. be very pervasive among, especially among the people that are watching this video, depending on how I title it, <laughs> you know, so, and I, and I, you know, I've had that experience dealing with, um, depression and anxiety and severe, like people, when I talk yeah. about it, I was hospitalized at eight years old and put on lithium. It was no joke situation. I was suicidal and attempted suicide many, many times from preteen through teen years. And yeah. the treatment was not only not working, but in a lot of ways it was making me worse. Because it yeah. wasn't, it, it was keeping me in a vicious cycle of just like a flip side. It was like, just treat it with the opposite and see what happens. Yeah. Okay. And I think that's very common. You're right. For so many people. So, um, long story short, um, this was a little over three years ago now. I am. Um, I was coming home from a yoga class with one of my girlfriends and I was, I was focusing on my, my binge food of choice, which was a big old bag of sea salt popcorn. And I had that in my mind. I'm gripping the steering wheel and I'm driving home and I'm thinking about it. And I get home. Um, I was living with my parents at the time. Uh, they were fighting constantly. Uh, my mother was a severe alcoholic and there was so much turmoil in our family and things that I, 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 I have even blocked out of my memory now because it was so traumatic for me. Um, so, you know, going home was, was nothing that I desired to do. Um, so anyways, I got home and I opened the cabinet door that was holding that bag of sea salt popcorn and something within me just screamed the word no. So I screamed, I said, no, and I shut the door and I ran down to the basement and I hit my knees and I just cried and cried and cried and cried and cried. And, and I said, you know, universe, God, I don't really believe in you, but I I don't know what else to do right but now. But I'm talking to you anyway. <laughs> but I'm talking to you anyway. And 
I said, please help me. I need help. So that was the night that started everything for me. I was guided to wonderful spiritual mentors and teachers, and I read their books. And um, one in particular that really resonated with me was A Course in Miracles, which is really well taught by uh, my mentors and teachers like Marianne Williamson and Gabby Bernstein and Wayne Dyer. And I started to become a devoted student of spirituality. And it's so weird to me to say that this was just shy of four years ago, because in, to me now, it feels like 10. Like it yeah. literally feels like 10 years ago. It's like being reborn as another person. When I look back, back at who I was, I'm like, it's like I'm watching a movie because I don't feel connected in like that was me because I, I can't imagine making those decisions, having those feelings, having the feeling that I would want to take my own life is so yeah. out of the realm of my understanding mm -hmm. now, but yeah. I was there. And that's what's right. so beautiful about spreading the message because I have to put disclaimers on all my videos, like, you know, seek professional help, call your physician, do all this. Okay. Do all that. Right. I'm going to say that again. <laughs> But it is my deepest, truest belief that we have the ability to heal ourselves and we have everything that we need inside to do so. And that is not just talk. It's what I truly believe. Whatever is available to any expert, to any guru, to any doctor, to whomever, especially with the help of Google, is available to you too. Mm-hmm. 100%. I totally believe that. I lived it as well. Um, I, I, I couldn't find any spiritual books on recovery from an eating disorder that hit my soul. You know, um, I read Spirit Chunky by Gabby Bernstein, and she dove a little bit into addiction, but it wasn't as severe as mine, and, and not to belittle her experience, but it just wasn't the same as mine, and I couldn't find one. So I had to do it all by myself. Um, I mean, of course, I had the support of friends and, and family, but I really felt this really strong call that, like, I needed to do this on my own. You created I, your path. That's right. I did. So fast forward four years, and now I've co-written this book with my friend Casey Arena, and um, who is a personal trainer and a really beautiful guide for helping people view food in a new way. And so it's a 30 day guide. And what it does is for the first half of the journey, we don't like the word recovery because of the connotation that implying that there's something wrong with you if you're in recovery. It's mm -hmm. like in the eating disorder community, there is this idea that like you're, you're striving for recovered. And if you're in recovery, you're somehow less than, right. and we didn't want anyone to feel that way. We wanted this to be a really supportive, beautiful environment for the reader the whole way through so we called it a discovery journey because that's what it is you know my journey isn't over um am i light years from where i was absolutely do i have more to learn absolutely that's why i'm here i am in a discovery journey i'm in the trenches doing this too um but i'm doing it from a place of peace and i'm doing it from a place of love and it's possible to do that and so the first 15 days is really guiding you through your own personal belief systems about your body and about food and, and really like you were sort of uh, alluding to earlier, like getting under the hood of that. Like yeah. what is that about? Um, with meditations and journaling exercises and a private community of women who are going through the book along with you. So that's what the whole first 15 days is about. The second half, Casey takes you through um, putting those spiritual practices into practice at the meal. And it's a really beautiful journey because it marries the two. And that's what we wanted to create for people because we didn't have that. We had to figure it out on our own. And so um, so, so that's what Body Peace is all about. And and we're really just happy to to be guiding, to be, to be, honestly, it's such an honor. I just start to cry. It's such an honor to do this because... I know how it feels to suffer and I know you do too. Mm -hmm. And to have come out the other side and be able to guide women in this way and hundreds of women who are doing this now and for them to have the strength to do this, it takes so much courage and bravery is just wild. It's amazing. So what you said is probably, I, I've been thinking a lot about just the business part of, of what I do and you know, what does my brand mean? What is, what is Beck's life? You know, I don't have this brand message because it's just so much. It's just me, right? It's just everything that's me. I will never position myself as someone who has made it all the way to the other side, right? Because the other side is probably dead. 
<laughs> right? Like when we're done, we're dead. Yeah. We are on this journey of discovery. We're on this journey of revealing ourselves. And that's, I think, what our practice is in our personal lives and in our business. We're constantly just revealing and learning things along the way. I still eat chocolate ice cream. I still have days where I wake up and I hate my butt. I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I, I talk about it too much on social media. Probably too much. People are like, unfollow. Um, but, but that's... But that's the beauty of this process. And I think the beauty of this new business model and this new way of teaching is that we get to take people along through social media, whoever, on our journeys with us. And I really, so truthfully appreciate you for that and for what you just said about discovery versus recovery. Because recovery means you're somehow still broken and you're trying to fix yourself from being broken. And that's not what it's about. Mm -mm. It's that we're all in perfection and going closer to, towards that revealing the perfection that we already mm -hmm. are totally it's exactly what it is it's we're we're going through um a challenge now the the women are almost done with their body piece journey um the 30-day journey and and the challenge is called stop strive stop striving start thriving mm -hmm. and because again we it's so easy for your your fear mind your ego to just want you to keep striving, even in the spiritual conversation, strive for being enlightened or striving yeah. for having no thoughts during meditation. And it's not about that. Mm -mm. Um, and I think that it's a really important thing that we talk about because, you know, I'm sure that people see certain people on social media, maybe appearing on, you know, famous TV shows or, or getting these great magazine placements. Um, and they, they never talk about, they're, they're where they're at, you know, in, in, yeah. in, the, in their own journeys. And so there's a, a, then there's a conception that's put in that person's mind of like, oh, if I want to be outwardly successful, I have to sacrifice my truth or I have right. to be perfect. And mm -hmm. it's just not real. Um, I mean, we are literally all on this journey together. We're just at different stops along the way. And so I, my reader is no different than me. I don't, I don't think that a reader of that, of this book is different than me. We are, we are the same person at our deepest soul. And if that's just words, that's fine. However, I might be seven steps ahead of you. And so why don't you let me take your hand and just guide you? I'd love you to meet me where I'm at. It's not, oh, like you need to stay down there because I'm the leader and you're the follower because that bullshit doesn't work anymore. And at the same time, you know? we're 700 steps away from our mentors in certain regards. So right. we're, we're also, you know, getting there. We're also learning and taking all these steps. I want to thank you for joining me today, but I want to thank you even more <laughs> for putting me in a much better, even mood because I was pissed off when I got <laughs> with you. <laughs> I know. That's how it I works know. though. Like I was feeling it. I expressed it. I reached out. And I got what I needed. And that's, that's also a good lesson. Whatever you're feeling, whatever you're needing, whatever's, um, you know, triggering that thing in your gut, make it known, say it right. to your God, to the universe, to your friend, to someone, just make that, that need that want that desire known because you will receive what you need in that moment. And more importantly, just to end, make sure you share it with someone who's just going to listen to you. Cause my intention wasn't like, let me put her in her place and tell her what to do. It was yeah. just like, let's, let's let her have that space. Cause that's all you needed. And that's all we all need is just to really be heard. You know? Well, we didn't make the video that we intended to, but we made a pretty good video. I feel. <laughs> I completely agree. Hello. <laughs> Body peace, body peace, body peace. Amen. If you liked what Heather had to say in this video today, please go check her out at heatherwaxman.com and pick up a copy of Body Peace. It is absolutely brilliant. For more videos like these and lots of goodies delivered straight to your inbox, sign up for my weekly newsletter at bexlife.com. I love you guys and I will see you soon in another Bex Life video.